It's an LED tester, not just any old LED tester, but one of the cheaper ones. So I'm wondering how safe this is going to be, particularly given that it's mains into an ungrounded case. And it's got this odd LED just sticking up in a socket in the top. And then two probes going out. I'm wondering what the circuitry is going to be like. But anyway, let's start by testing it. So I shall pop in the probes. I've not explored this at all. We shall be finding out together what voltage this puts out and what sort of current. The short circuit current. Well, that's a bad start. Really? Okay, tell you what. Let's see if we can find some probes that actually fit it. Unless I can just unscrew these completely. Yeah, I'll just unscrew it completely. Well, that's even safer. And we'll just stuff that in like that. There we go. Now it's connected. Lovely. Hmm, good start. Uh, now I shall make sure that I'm not putting my fingers anywhere near these probes. And I shall bring in suitable LEDs to test. We'll also test this thing. Uh, the instructions, by the way, says it's suitable for 3 210 volt with no adjustment necessary. Current limited. Um, it's suitable for testing one more LEDs directly. And I believe this is a little tester for just small LEDs. And this bit rather pleasingly says, beware of imitations. Don't get shoddy products. Well, I would say we've already found one. Now, where is my little matching Chinese tester. So we'll plug this into the little matching Chinese tester. I shall plug it in. I shall turn it on. Nothing happens. Good. At what point is the, this LED here supposed to light? I'm going to turn the power off here. I don't really trust it. Uh, right, I don't know what that uh, is. It, uh, that LED, I tested that earlier and it was working, but I didn't test it in this. Maybe it's just fried it. Maybe the polarity is incorrect. Let's just stick this into a tester. Or maybe I've just uh, not worked out how to use this yet. Give me a second. Oh, the LED works. So goodness knows what that does. <laughs> I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. Anyway, let's just ignore this then, since that bit doesn't work. Let's turn the power on. Ugh. And carefully, holding these leads gingerly, let's get an LED of the type that it is designed to test, amongst others. It's designed to test like backlights to uh, video panels and stuff like that, like LCD screens. And if I connect this to here, is it going to light? Nothing's going to happen. What if I click that that way? Nothing's going to happen. Click it that way. Oh, that's not a great start. Nothing is happening at all. Excellent. Good quality control right there. Uh, let me just grab a test meter and stick it and see if there's anything across these. This little dinky cheapo meter has uh, crop clips on it already. Slightly melted crop clips due to an incident. Uh, so let's turn, put this on here, set it to DC voltage, let's set it to 500 volts DC. Turn it on. Nothing. 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 Well, that's slightly worrying, isn't it? Is this making a good connection? Or if I turn it round, I don't, I mean it's AC so it's not going to make any difference. Nothing. Right, tell you what. <laughs> Uh, shoddy product indeed. This is not working. Lovely. Let's just open it up then and see what's inside and what it was supposed to do. I should just get these leads out of the way. It's dangly leads everywhere at the moment. Uh, that's not really a great start to the video. I mean, on the other hand, it's a great start in the sense that it's... Uh, all gone horribly wrong already. Right, let's unscrew some screws, shall we? And see if we can find anything interesting. One screw. Two screw. Three screws. I wonder if this is the type with the clip-on lid on the top. It just feels, I'm feeling a little bit of movement here. That might be quite actually 
Handy for seeing how this goes together. Ooh, right, okay. There is a potted module inside here with a bit of heat shrink over it. Exciting. Oh, the top of that does unclip. It does actually unclip. This is going to let us see a bit more. Is it going to unclip completely? Or am I going to have to... Yeah, it's unclipped completely. Right. Oh, you know what? The LED is in series with the output. See, that, that would have been useful to know. That would have been useful to know. Right, tell you what. Let's try this again, shall we? Now that we know what's going on. I shall clip this on. There's going to be a real loud clicking noise. I shall take it off shot just in case it's super loud. Oh, it doesn't want to clip back on. It doesn't want to clip back on. Right, that'll do. I shall just leave this dangling out then in a dangerous manner. Right, let's uh, put the red, not that red often means positive. Uh, let's put this LED in here. That's a bit tacky. I wonder how many people have got these and it's not worked and they've thought that it's faulty. And it's just crap design. Right. Okay. So if I plug this in now. And I short those leads together. Why has this got two positions? So if I plug it in now, carefully get these up where I can not get fried. And I turn the power on. And I touch them together. Nothing. Turn that on there. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this isn't going well, is it? No. Let's turn the power off again. What the heck? This isn't good, is it? Oh, you know what? See, the red wire is going to positive. Meaning that this LED would have to be the other way around and I've probably blown the LED. Is it going to still work now? This is just precarious. This is just the worst start of a video ever, but also the best start of a video ever. Let's turn it on. Uh, oh, the LED is flickering, but it's dead now though. It's not happy, is it? No. It's, uh, oh, there it goes. I've blown it clear right. Okay, so now this is working. What happens in the other position? Lower intensity? Yeah, lower intensity. Right, tell you what. Let's shove this. Uh, and we'll bring in an LED here. And we'll put it across this LED. Oh, that, that's reasonable enough. It is testing it. What about just to see what voltage this is going to be. Let's try putting it across one of these modules, just live and neutral. Oh God, it's making the whole, th that's a, that must be quite a high voltage. It says 1.2 watts. I take this off, it suddenly goes to zero. Uh, right, tell you what then, let's do a little electrical test. I shall turn the power off. I shall bring in the little cheap meter again and we'll see what open circuit voltage it's putting out. Let's set this back to 500 volts because I think it's going to be quite high. I think they might be telling porkies about the uh, up to 110 volt thing. So what is the open circuit voltage going to be? Uh, 212 volts. That's what it's going to be. What is the short circuit current going to be? 200 milliamps here. Uh, 6 milliamps. Now I go like that. It goes up to 27 milliamps, which is enough to give you quite a significant electric shock, is it not? Well, they're both enough to give you quite a shock. Okay, right. Now we have ascertained that this kind of works. That is so vague, especially the fact they've just poked it through the case. What are they doing? What is What was going through their mind there? Anyway, let's explore the insides again. We've kind of almost explored the insides, but I shall take the cover off that heat shrink and we can test it. First of all, I'm going to shorten these leads together, just in case. 
Yeah, that'll do. Mm -hmm. If I get a shock, I get a shock. No shock, that's fine. So let's cut some of the heat shrink away. I have a horrible feeling this is going to be just a capacitive dropper and it's going to be actually quite electrically dangerous. I'll turn that power supply off. I do hope it is dangerous because you know what? We do like dangerous stuff on this channel. It's what makes life worth almost living. Oh, 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 oh. Righty ho. I shall uh, reverse engineer this. This isn't looking good. I shall reverse engineer this and we'll take a look at the circuitry. One moment, please. And resume. Suffice to say, if you've got one of these units, you may wish to stop using it because it carries a very high fatal electrocution risk. Let's zoom down in this. The incoming supply goes to two capacitors, two 220 nanofarad capacitors in parallel with a one mega ohm discharge resistor, just in case you get a tingle off the plug. That's the least of your worries. The probes are the bit you're going to get the tingle off. There is a discrete bridge rectifier, and then there are three resistors, including the super high power mode, which is a 3.3k resistor, but the red band has changed colour owing to the fact it's overheating. There's a 33k resistor and a 1.2 mega ohm resistor. Okay, let's take a look at the other side of the circuit board. The arrangement is just as mentioned. It's got the two capacitors are in parallel with their discharge resistor. There's the bridge rectifier with the wires. Noting that the live here is going straight to the bridge rectifier here. So fundamentally, one of the probes uh, is basically connected direct to the mains via a diode and the little tiny LED. So that's not uh, confidence aspiring. If you swap polarity, these capacitors will still pass ample enough current to give you a... a Terrible electrical experience. But the negative side goes uh, to this common bus for those resistors that then go out to the different uh, settings. I didn't know there was a middle setting. There is a low setting, I should say. Let me show you the schematic. The switch in the middle position, uh, it basically has a 1.2 mega ohm resistor. It's a sort of low setting, but is actually common to the other ones as well. It just, just passes right through because it meant a two-way switch with off in the middle actually gives it three modes. So here's the incoming AC supply. It's not polarised. It's a non-polarised plug. It could be plugged in any way around. There's the two 220 nanofarad capacitors in parallel to give 440 nanofarad. There's the token gesture discharge resistor, which isn't really uh, anything special given that it does sticks mains out to one of the probes anyway. Goes through a bridge rectifier, goes through the little LED dangling out the front on the shaft leads through a a gnarly hole into a connector, uh, noting that the positive wire is actually black, which is why I took the LED out and thought, oh, that must be for testing LEDs, and I put it in with the positive to red and the negative to black. That was the wrong way around. That's why it didn't work the first time. But that goes straight out to the positive probe, um, and the negative goes via these resistors straight to the output via the one mega, 1.2 mega ohm resistor. Oh, I'll just correct that. One 0.2 mega ohm resistor and you can switch it to medium mode which is 33k or super smoky resistor mode which is 3.3k where if you bridge the lead scaler it will emit smoke inside and that goes out to the other lead uh, excellent so i looked on ebay to see are they still actually selling these oh yes yes they are and rather amusingly let me just zoom out here Rather amusingly, the listing even shows it with the little sleeves off because the probes don't fit in. You have to take the probes off to get those things in. Um, and there's the LED dangling off the front, the one that's in series with you to prevent you from dying, which it won't do. £11.40, it's a bargain um, for her death. Uh, the, I took, did a, a search that said, are you interested in more of these on eBay? And I said, oh yeah, show me the others. And it said, oh yeah, we've got, we've got loads of them. Well, like 25 different listings came up in that suggested thing showing the same picture every time of a young lady uh, probing around on a circuit board with these live probes referenced to the mains. Oh, China, you and your electrical standards. So um, there you go. If you have one of these, then I would recommend that you might want to consider not using it because even with an RCD, uh, some of the RCDs don't react very well to half-wave DC, uh, half-wave rectified mains, 
which is what this is put now. Oh, no, also notice no capacitor on that uh, circuit diagram. That's also why I seem to get quite a low voltage, uh, relatively speaking. I didn't get the full mains voltage when I tested it with a little dinky meter because it was getting choppy half wave DC and it just basically showed roughly half the voltage. But yes, this is not a safe device. Um, if you've been using one for a while, you've probably got lucky. Just be aware that if you were grounded and you touch the probes or the circuit board while you're probing it, there is the risk of a fatal electric shock. But other than that, it's a, a stunningly simple, third world, interesting LED testing design. Really quite fascinating, but fascinatingly deadly.